The following is paid programming. It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803-0930. Toll free at 1-800-616-9236. And cell calls are free at star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullius. Hey everybody, this is the Tax Lady, and this is our hour to talk about taxes and anything. You know, let's face it, tax season, believe it or not, is like less than four months away. And our job is to make sure that you know what's going to come down the pike. And today we got another special uh, program for you. Um, we're going to talk about the New York State of Health and how to get low-cost health insurance. I know that pertains to a lot of people in Western New York. We have our, our health guru in studio, but before we talk to, to him and get all your health questions uh, ready to go, because uh, I can't think of anybody that cares more about people and their health insurance than Tim Elias, and, and he's the head of our EG Health Connect, and if there's a way to save you money on your health insurance, and he knows all the ins and uh, outs. And let's say you're 62 and you're just starting to retire and you're thinking, I lost my health insurance, Tim can help you. And he's gonna be up in a second, but before then I got uh, Christopher Fabian in the studio. Hey, Chris. Hello, Esther. Hello, Christopher, and you were at the walk this morning. Well, we could call it a, a flight, not a walk. With that That's wind why. today, oh well, my. God, it was crazy out at the Outer Harbor, but it was a great walk for Alzheimer's. Uh, they raised over $400,000 oh, just in so the great. Buffalo region alone. Uh, they have more walks coming up. I know Lewiston has one, Batavia. Um, and EG Tax was one of the major sponsors. And EG Tax is one, yep, this year again, one of the major sponsors. And so that was great. And, and we're so thankful, really. And you and Tim, we hear your voice. Yes, uh, hello, Elias, Esther. And Happy fall. You were there, of course, yes. today. Yes, it was uh, beautiful weather out there. Looked a little dicey to start out with, but uh, like Chris said, uh, that 40-mile-an-hour uh, wind or whatever it was blew all the clouds <laughs> away, and everybody got Isn't to walk down. is it good that we're all not skinny and we won't be blown away? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's one good, good thing and, when you're uh, well yep. anchored to the ground, right? Yep, and the other thing, too, is uh, even though they might not have caught up with us uh, with pledges before we did the walk, the link is still on the website, and they can still pledge and, and, and donate if they would like to. Well, and I will tell you personally, uh, my, my husband uh, is an Alzheimer's victim, and uh, the Alzheimer's Association has been just unbelievable. Uh, you know, and you kind of feel like you're out there all by yourself when somebody that you're caring for has Alzheimer's and dementia. So it's, um, it's absolutely a great organization. Yes. You know, and I know it personally. Yep. So uh, we wanted to also talk, and again, thanks for you guys being there this morning too. Um, and we also want to talk about tax school that's coming up, right, Chris? Right. Uh, starts October 10th. Uh, we have classes in West Seneca, Lockport, and Tonawanda, uh, morning classes or evening classes. And if you're just like, oh, I can't make morning or evening, I'm busy, we have at your home, in your pajamas, anytime you want, There's online no class. Right. There's just no excuse. Exactly. So we do have the online class available, too. That meets, if you want to be live in that, that's on Saturdays. Otherwise, during the week, you can play it, the video of it, and turn in your homework that way. Um, and it's free, absolutely free. The course is free. You, there is a small charge for the book. We don't make any money on that. I always like putting that disclaimer out there. Um, yeah, it's strictly, the, but the, the training, are, we have our experts that do the training, and it's so great. I think the in-person class, I, not, nothing to take away from the on, online class, but there's something about being in class with other struggling tax understanders, you know, and being there with the teacher who gets to tell some of those really interesting stories about, let me tell you about this taxpayer, and, and it just adds depth to the whole teaching situation. It is. I mean, it's amazing. At the walk today, we were talking to a young lady, and we said, oh, interested in taking a tax class. And she goes, well, I do all my family's tax returns, but I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, that's, I'm like, that's we just look great. at each other and go, what? Here, sign up for course, and then you can get paid for doing their tax return. Yeah, that's for you sure. Know? 
That's for sure. Yep. But if okay, you're interested in it, sorry. Yes, um, I was just going to say, where? how do you register? Yep. Go to egtax.com. There is a link for Tax Matter School. Or you can give us a call at the office at 632-7886, and we could send you the information or, mail, or register you right over the phone. Right. Okay. Our phone number here in studio is 8030930, oh, star 930 in a cell phone. You can text your questions or comments to 3930. And I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, with Christopher Fabian, Tiff, uh, Tim, uh, Tiffany's not here, Tim Eliason from EG Health Connect. We're talking about um, any tax-related matter, but specifically about health insurance. But I think we have Ann that's been waiting for a while on line one. So why don't we see what Ann would, had to say. Hey, Ann, how are you? Oh, pretty good. What can we help you with? Uh, my husband and I are beneficiaries of our son's New York State retirement system. Okay. And I was wondering how we can best uh, handle this without to avoid a large tax bite. Also okay. No, he, your son passed away, obviously. Yes. And um, is the state going to give you a lump sum, or are they going to uh, pay you monthly? Lump sum. Lump sum. Okay, so tell her the good news on New York State. He, did, he was not uh, killed in the line of duty, was he? No. Okay. So, Chris, tell, and, and Tim, tell her the good news on New York State at least. Well, you can – well, the, New York State, you have a 20000 exclusion if you if – you, um, Didn't you say he was a New York State employee? The beneficiary still get a twenty thousand exclusion. Okay, okay. Unlike the employee, if it right. was himself, he would get it all tax free. So the first twenty thousand would be tax free on New York State. Um, I believe you could. Could you roll that over to a inherited IRA? And yes, I, yes, we could. So, so that would give you three uh, options: to take the whole thing, to take it over a five year period, or to annuitize it. Mm-hmm. And so, obviously, if you don't need the money and you can annuitize it, you can take a little bit a year over using uh, your life expectancy. The life expense expectancy would be much less amount that you'd have to take, and there then it'd be much less taxes. Mm -hmm. This was a sizable amount, and uh, we also have the option of renouncing it because he was married, but he never changed his be beneficiary. And I, you know, well, have you sought have you sought the advice of a, of a, an attorney? Pardon? Have you sought the advice of an attorney? But uh, he hasn't gotten back to us yet, and I just thought I could find out. Well, I will tell you, I would give Jeff Katz or Dennis Kitchen a call. Those are attorneys that we work with, and they're specifically um, attorneys that know about elder care. And I, But before you make your decision, you certainly don't want to make a decision just on a little radio show phone call. I would suggest you talk to them. I, I know Jeff uh, or Dennis would give you great advice, but that's something you really have to, to look at because if you were to... Uh, turn down the money, would it go to your daughter-in-law? Yes, it could, and it would have to go to the state because they right. had three children. Yeah, well, right. the thing is, well, if it goes right. to, sorry, Esther, go on, go on, Chris. if it goes to the estate, the estate could prob would probably pay 37% tax on that to the federal, plus New York state tax, so you're looking over 43% of it disappearing compared right. to if you just take it yourself and without but knowing she the wants to make sure that the children you know with the here what the muddy what muddies up the water is that depending upon what she really wanted to do with it if she wants to give the money to the widow and the children right that's where you got to really do some planning so i'd suggest you talk to them do you know you know um dennis and um jeff's, jeff's number number? yep jeff's number is six three 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 six three. It's very simple. Six three 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 six three, and that's Jeff Katz. And Dennis Kitchen is six three one five six six one. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. You very talk to somebody before you make your decision. Okay. Oh yes. And I'm sorry to hear about the death Definitely. of your son. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank you. That's so sad. It is. It and is. you know, if you end up taking the whole distribution up front and then mm -hmm. gifting your children, your daughter in law, the money, we can work the numbers up for her too, as well, to let her know how much to put aside for taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, that sounds like a, a, an expensive proposition but to take. But it, it may be cheaper it. than giving it to the that's estate. True. It, and that's true. Putting it in the estate, she certainly would pay a lot more in taxes. So. Yeah. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, who knows if somebody couldn't ta contact New York State, um, you know, maybe it goes directly to, won't go directly to the, to the, to the um, estate, estate, and it could go. I mean, yep. it would be nice. Yep. Who knows? You know, because so many times it's not the law, it's the loopholes in the law that make it, you know, it's, if you know how to do the loopholes, that's what's so important. Right. And, you know, the, he sounds very young that this happened to. Yep. But this is like we said, you know, with our retirement seminar we had a while ago, and we say it all the time. You have to update your will, update your beneficiaries on your IRA, your 401k, so something like this doesn't happen. Right, right. And uh, that was the other thing that was real popular today was our letters of instruction. So in a situation like that where something may come along unexpected, it's always good to have those extra instructions just so you know in a situation right. like that. Right, and the other thing is, and there, there's, you know, the, the son who has a wife and children never updated his beneficiaries. And if anything, people that are listening here should understand that those, you never know when something can happen. You can be 25 years old and get run over by a bus. You want to make sure that you keep your beneficiaries up to date because in you can hear how sad she was yep. um, in her voice. What happens if you don't is is whatever you did the last time that's what happens if you leave no will it goes to probate and the new york state decides who gets it that's why you want to make sure that you that those letters of instruction that we have on our website is so good because it really gives you an opportunity to look at all of your assets and who who is your beneficiaries and some some many of the people listening might want to do a trust you know the important thing is to plan Right. In advance. Yep. Right? Definitely. All right. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930. 8030930, star 930 in a cell phone. You can text us at 3930. I'm Esther Golias from EG Tax. We'll talk to you on the other side. Choices, choices, choices. We sure have them. Do you want speed, effectiveness, competency, price? It's all part of the equation we use when selecting a product or service. All of these are important, but so are relationships. I'm Esther Gullius. When you're doing business with someone who fits the bill and cares about you personally, it's like adding a cherry on the top. That's our experience with Ryan Ferraro and his insurance agency. Ryan cares about you, your family, your home, your business, with the added strength of nationwide insurance on your side. Call Ryan at 688-2199 and tell him Esther sent you. Just like the wild wing dove sings a song, sounds like she's singing. Ooh, ooh. Hey, I'm Esther Galeas, the tax lady from EG Tax. We're here talking taxes. We're here talking money. We, but we have our special guest in studio, Tim Eliason from EG Health Connect. And I will tell you, if you're somebody that's, and you can hear it on the, when with all these debates, everybody's talking about health insurance and the cost of health insurance. And I will tell you, Tim knows everything about it. Uh, our phone number eight zero three zero nine three zero eight zero three zero nine three zero star nine thirty on a cell phone, and our phone our text number is thirty nine thirty. Right, yep. Tim? Yep, that's correct. Okay, let's talk uh, before, I know we have calls coming in, but let's talk about health insurance. Um, everybody's talking about, oh, there should be Medicare, Medicaid for all. Uh, do you have a feeling on that? Uh, how how that would what that would be? Do people really understand what Medicaid for all would be like? Well, you know, when they're debating this, and I have to admit, I have not been watching the debates. I have have chosen to watch other entertainment. But um, the Medicare for all, basically, what they're doing is taking the existing Medicare uh, system and expanding that for people under sixty five. You know, we already have those people that have Social Security disability. But they're expanding it for them so that they would be able to have the same premiums, you know, the same benefits, uh, the same plans, the same options. But uh, what it boils down to is, is how are you going to pay for it? You know, how is it going to be paid for? And, you know, what they see in some of the numbers that they're crunching is it could be a four or $5,000 tax impact on a family. Well, that almost equates to what they pay in premiums anyway. So it's not really saving money in their pocket because they're going to pay for it really in an indirect method through their taxes. Right. Well, uh, that's 
that's that and of course medicaid um it is um uh, for all it's it's interesting because the the federal government would administrate everything and and you know what it's like dealing with uh, government oh, agencies yes. Yes. it takes a while for them to get up to speed does it not isn't it true that many people have fallen through the crack, cracks with the new york state of health oh yeah definitely i mean you know when you're dealing with uh, an entity that uh, you know is trying to do that i mean they're processing right now new york state has over seven hundred thousand people that are going through the marketplace for insurance and you know so they would have a similar thing but you know population of New York is far greater than 700,000 and Medicare for all would really take away from the benefits that they would have through their employers. They would, you know, really change the structure of everything handled as far as even people's and benefits not to from mention employer. The, the doctors, you know, oh, yes. will, yeah. will the doctors take it. Yep. Well, anyway, I, I, hate, I don't want to get political because that's not what I'm all about. But anyway, let's uh, let's talk about health insurance. And um, the, New York State is probably one of the leading uh, proponents on health insurance and they have all kinds of programs set up for people if you don't have health insurance you should really pay attention because if you don't have health insurance especially if you're a lower income person and the reason you don't have it is because you can't afford it we have good news for you right Tim exactly exactly you know and I was driving here today and you can tell it's fall because I saw the little league football players out there running around and the leaves blowing and whatever else is going on. But we're coming up on open enrollment and everybody thinks, oh, I can only get insurance when there's open enrollment through the marketplace. And this year it's going to start in November and go through January. But there is that essential plan out there and you can get into that any time, any time of the year. Uh, it's just like the Medicaid system. But the essential plan is phenomenal insurance. Um, you know, per person, it can be as low as $20. If you want to go crazy, you can spend $46.12. A month. And that'll, yeah, a month. And that'll get you medical, dental, and vision with no deductible. <coughs> so, you know, those are things that, you know, and again, this is still part of New York, and this goes all the way back to the Affordable Care Act, you know, what was called Obamacare. Um, you know, even if it's struck down, I do not see New York ever getting rid of this system. Uh, okay. They love to have the system, and, and I think they would be, you know, similar to what Massachusetts did prior to the Affordable Care Act and have their so, own okay. state run. So you said that you can get into the essential plan, but what are the qualifications to get into the essential plan? Well, right now, and it's based off the federal poverty level, which goes up every year. It went over up over $400. And that make, that's a misleading thing, too. Yes. When you think poverty level, you think on the corner with a tin cup um, and a cane. That's not true. It, it, it's, it can be a substantial figure, can it not? Exactly, exactly. And, and for an individual person, and uh, for 2019, $24,280. That is what an individual could make and still be the unessential. So one person. Yep. That equate, 24000 Yep. And it equates to $50,000 for a family of four. Okay. So if there's a family of four that their adjusted gross income now, are there modified adjusted gross income? Not just their gross income, but there's some things that we can do we'll talk about in a second. But, you know, $50,000 for a, a family of four, you know, mom and dad, $20 each. Uh, that may mean that the kids could be in Child Health Plus for, you know, $15 a month. I mean, there's very affordable insurance out there. So, like, for $60, the family's covered? Exactly. If exactly. they're at... If they're at around 50000 Exactly. You know, right. and they can be over. Um, I always give everybody the example. Even if I have somebody walk in the door that makes 27000 that's over the $24,000 mark, okay? If they went into the market and bought the same level of insurance as the essential plan, we're talking no deductible, low co-pays, it would cost them $250 a month. Okay, well, I say to them, how would you like to pay yourself for your health insurance? If you're willing to pay that amount and you put in $200 a month into a retirement account, lowers your income, now you're back to $20 a month insurance and you paid yourself for your health insurance premium. Right. In other words, they put money into an IRA or exactly. into a, a, a 401k at work that reduces what their gross income, taxable income is, and then they, they get the full benefit of going in the essential plan. And insurance In that other they words, can you use. have to do the plan, right? Exactly. You have to plan it. Exactly. And, you know, for self-employed people, you know, there's a lot of things they can do. You know, I've run into families that have been paying ten or $12,000 for their health insurance because they're self-employed, they sole proprietor business that they have on a, a Schedule C. You know, with SEPs and Simples and solo 401ks, they have a lot of options where they can say, hey, 
I'll just put this money in there and look where my income's at. So, so, so the, here's the thing. If you don't have health insurance, or even if you have health insurance and it's costing you an arm and a leg, or you know, or you're not even sure. I mean, you can have health insurance at work and it's, and it's uh, very expensive. Mm-hmm. As an employee, you can get out as well. The thing is, give us a call at EG Tax at 632-7886 or go on our website. And you can talk to Tim about, about uh, the possibility of getting into the New York State of Health Insurance. And you would, you would be surprised at the options and what's available to the state of New York uh, residents because New York State is 110% behind this. Exactly. And, you know, I always tell everybody, I always use the example. You know, you get up in the morning, you're making your bagel, and you cut your hand. Last thing I want you to do is look at your hand and go, hmm, that's a $2,500 deductible. I guess I'll just get some super glue. Yeah. I want you to be able to look at your hand and say, hmm, $25 copay at urgent care. I think I should go get my stitches and get right. this taken right. care of. I know, right. I know. you know, with health care, with insurance laws right now, parents can claim their – not claim their kids, have their kids on their insurance up to age 26. Mm-hmm. But now think about it. Most kids are out of school at age 22, mm-hmm. right? What What is their income from 22 to 26? Probably under the $25,000 limit. Exactly. Where the parents, if that's their only child on it, is paying maybe an extra $800 a year, $1,000 a year to cover that kid's health insurance when they could go out, drop the child from their insurance, mm-hmm. and the child pick up the essential plan and have better insurance. I hate to say it, but it's probably better insurance than the parents' insurance. And, and I've sat with those, and I've had parents look at their kid and go, huh, you want to get another one that, that fell into your lap, huh? And, you know, it, it just it works very well. Plus, for them, too, like Chris said, with their employer, there's a lot of times that a couple's plan is less of a premium than a family plan. And so that they save on their premium through their employer. Um, you know, they're able to spend the kids off. And, you know, right now with the way the tax laws, with the, the loss of the exemptions and things, you know, the net gain to the house can be sizable. So Right. And th- and that's the, that's the whole thing is it's really – don't don't misunderstand what uh, Tim and, and Chris are saying. They, they're not saying every kid – that could be on their parents' plan up till age 26 should now drop it and go into their own because what muddies the water is is, is the kid in college, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Yep. If the kid's 24 or 23 and in college and um, the parents would be giving up the education credit mm-hmm. then and the state of New York credit, then you have to really do all the math. So it becomes a much more complicated thing, but that's something we do at no charge, correct? Yeah. That's correct. And the other thing, too, is uh, I was at an expo about uh, two weeks ago, and a gentleman spoke about um, colleges right now because colleges have to mandate that people, you know, young people have insurance when they go into college. And the thing is, is that some of these colleges are looking more so at the type of plan that their parents have them covered with. And if it doesn't meet a certain level, all of a sudden they have to, you know, they have to pay extra to the school for insurance. Um, you know, is it a money grab for the school? I'm not sure. But, you know, when when you have a son or daughter that's enrolled in college right now, make sure that you're <laughs> checking that, uh, you know, that statement that you're getting that bill from the university to make sure that there's no extra charge for health insurance because they looked at the insurance you turned in and it didn't meet their standards. Okay. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930. 8030930 star 930 in a cell phone you can text us at 3930 and I Joan had been waiting a long time and she hung up you can call back Joan I'm going to take Bob hey Bob how are you sir Hi Esther I have What a can we help you with Check here I'm a little concerned about from the state of New York sending me money uh, Department of State uh, taxation finances for my property tax relief check is this something in lieu of a star, or what's going on? Yeah, with- well, that's give give him the lowdown on that, Chris. And, and yeah, the, the, they're doing two types. You either get a reduction of your property taxes, or you get the check in the mail in the fall, and you got the and check got in it. the mail. I never signed up for that. I thought you had to, you had to sign up for it. It's based upon income. In lieu, in lieu of star, is that yet? Yep. 
Yep, it's all based upon income, and I don't have the threshold here in front of me, uh, but I want to think it's around $200,000 where they convert you to getting a check in the mail instead right. of a... so instead of you getting a reduction on your property tax bill, they're sending you the money directly. Is that to my advantage, or is not? Six and one half dozen. Though, it should be the same. Is that better, should, better off with this? The, the difference is, uh, you know, the difference is, uh, they're not having the municipalities reduce the, the tax bill. They're sending you the money directly. I see. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yep. All right, Bob. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We're going to take a short break for the news. 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. Don't forget, tomorrow is S Corporation and Partnership deadline, too. So we'll talk about that, too. We'll see you on the other side. Hey, this is Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We're here talking taxes. We're talking uh, tomorrow's extension deadline for uh, S-Corps and partnerships. We want to make sure you get them in. The penalty for being late on an extension, oh, my gosh. You don't want to have that happen again. And, we'll, of course, EG Tax would, uh, if you haven't gotten your partnership or your S-Corp done, uh, you can you can be sure that we will work and get it done for you, so you meet the de- miss don't miss the deadline. Right, which um, is Monday, because of f- f- tomorrow's that's Sunday. That's right, tomorrow's Sunday. Oh my God, <laughs> tomorrow is Sunday. Here, me and Thank Tim are you. looking at each other, going, um, "We're it's not." It's the sixteenth. Well, yeah. because they bump it over. <laughs> yeah, right. It's true. It feels like Friday to me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, let's all let's talk to Bob, and then we're going to also talk. I tell I want while I'm talking to Bob, Mike. I want you to think about the one of the great stories of somebody that you helped that okay. um, that didn't think that they could do it. So let's. T- it's it's. Oh, Mike. Yeah. Hey, Mike from uh, Clarence, right? Hey, Mike. How can we help you? I got it. Uh, we're talking about adjusted income for your health uh, services. Right. We went, through and we went through that whole thing, and when we looked at it, any money we put into the IRA, or, yeah, an IRA account, an IRA account could not be deducted off our income. Pat, you want to expand on that? Go ahead. You Tim? D- d- for the projected that you were going to deduct for it? Uh, your income qualification for qualifying for aid in your health care um, if you put money into an IRA, I had read it does not, it can it has to be added back on. You couldn't deduct it. It's no, because it's your modified adjusted gross income, just like when they do, like Social Security, that there's a non-taxable portion. There's a portion that uh, that is gross that you have to add back in, too. So it's your modified adjusted gross income. But, you're de- but contributing to an IRA does take away from your income to help you with health insurance. Based on your projection. It does. I, I had read that you, because it was modified, you had to add it back in when you qualified for health care. No, because everything's based on projections for the upcoming year. So if you're going to be going into a qualified health plan and the open enrollment for the marketplace is coming up November through the end of January through New York State. So if you're in a qualified health plan, you're going to be doing that. They want you to base it on your 2020 income, your projected income. Okay. So you, uh, and, and you can reduce it by your uh, IRA contributions, right, Tim? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Please, sir. Can I, real quickly. So basically, I've made so much. Say, I only made eighteen, or I made thirty-six, and I spent that thirty-six. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some cash that I've got because I'm retired now, and just take some cash and stock deductible and throw that into an IRA, and then say, okay, I now am six thousand less. Can but I do that? Do you have earned income from a W-2, like a, a, a job? No. Zero. No, it's got to be yeah. from wages. Yeah, it's got to be from wages. you got to be working in order to put it in there. No, you don't have to be working to put an IRA in. A 401 yes, you do. I'll agree. No, but no, no. no, no. Uh, if, you're, if you want to put money into an IRA or any qualified pension plan, the money that goes in has to be from self-employment or wages. I can't okay. take six thousand and throw it at it. No, not no. if you're you're not. You have to have wages or self-employment. You cannot just put six thousand dollars away wages. without wages or self-employment income. The first year we could have done it. Now I can't. No, yeah. but are you guys filing a joint return? I find that for other people. Go ahead, ma'am. Sorry. 
Do, are you filing a joint return? Yes. Yes. Does she have wages? Nope. Nope. No self-employment, correct? Yes. Well, we're retired and living off of our income from... Okay, well... Uh, Okay, so an income property is not considered self-employment income. So in this case, you cannot put money into an IRA or simple plan or um, or any other qualified pension plan. So like, we have no deduction. Yeah, that's exactly, correct. exactly. Thanks so much. All right, got all right. Thank sorry. you. All right, Mike. Okay, so now I understand the the concern. But yes, you can put money into an IRA or a pension plan. Uh, if you have wages, but you have to have wages to qualify. Exactly. And if they don't see that, where there's not that earned income, mm-hmm. then obviously it's not going to count towards your modified right, adjusted. Right, maybe that's where Maybe that's where they got the confusion. Yeah, it's All right, so something. tell me a story, Tim, about um, somebody that maybe just thought they didn't couldn't qualify for health insurance, wasn't weren't using any kind of health uh, benefit, and, and didn't think that there was any answer, and you did. Well, I have had several, and they're very similar stories, and I've had people look across and, and at me, and, and you mentioned it earlier about those people that are that 62, 63 years old, and they're sitting down, they're thinking, oh, you know what, I want to retire, I'm just worried, I can't afford health insurance, and i got to make it to 65 where I can get Medicare, and you know, I know what my benefits and my costs are going to be there, but you know, I'm just so concerned, and I had an individual that we sat and talked with, and we looked at things, and, uh, you know, the gentleman, uh, the caller mentioned it about having some cash, and I said, well, I said, you know, tell me a little bit about your portfolio. What do you have? What are your assets? Things like that. He was married. He was 63. His wife was 65. He decided to retire. He had a 401K, and he was thinking about Social Security. His wife was already taking Social Security. And I said, do you have any money that you could leave those investments alone? Let them grow. He cash, well, I got about this much. And I said, how would you like to have insurance for $20 a month until you retire? He looks at me and goes, well, my COBRA said that I should be paying $800. And I said, no, you hold on to that money. Well, we looked like geniuses by the time we got done because I, I did this a year or so back. The market had gone crazy. He goes, you know how much money I made in my 401K because I didn't touch it and I paid $20 a month for my insurance? He goes, I think I'm going to put you in my will. <laughs> you know, and, and it was so just. So what did you what did you have him do? You had him not take money out of his qualified plans he to didn't live t- on. Yep. He was living off of his savings. He right? had some savings. Uh, right. He had done. He was very very good investor with because some money. Because the point is, if you're going to be using these subsidized plans through New York State, you want to make sure that you keep your income low. It, so if it's up, if there's so if you're looking at your pots of money and you say, okay, this is my pension pot. Mm -hmm. This is my IRA pot. Mm -hmm. These are my investment pots. And this is my savings pot. And so if you touch the stock, you touch the IRAs, you touch the 401ks, all of those make your income go up. Exactly. But if you take it out of your savings Mm -hmm. or you borrow the money, you're still living. You're still living at the same income uh, status as you had originally. However, it's not taxable and you get the essential plan. And, right? and you have great insurance. And then, you know, this individual has since turned 65, and uh, I'm, I'm helping him with his Medicare, and I start explaining to his options, and we're going through his Medicare. And he looks at me and goes, no, I want to keep my essential plan. <laughs> I don't want to get Medicare. I want to keep that plan that you got me on when I was 63 and 64 years old. And I said, well, you're 65 now. I hate to tell you, but you're, you're in a different realm. I can't help you there on that one. So, but, so uh, now what, what he's going to do is go on the the Medicare, mm-hmm. and he's going to get the supplemental. Right? Yeah, well, supplement or advantage. I mean, a lot of times people get those two words mixed up. You know, advantage plans, those are the plans that, that you hear called Part C and Part D. You know, the advantage plans that, that work with the alphabet soup of Part A and Part B. And then there's supplement plans that are plans A through L, N, uh, different letters that are really set as standards by the government. They're two separate animals, and and that's what I'm doing a lot of with right now, sitting people with people um, down to do Medicare, um, having them understand uh, we're going to do a uh, what we've decided to call connect with Medicare, the EG Health Connect, and connect with Medicare. Um, avoid the disconnection because a lot of people don't understand how Medicare works. They don't understand that there's a difference between advantage and supplement. They don't understand what their needs are because a lot of them have come from jobs where every year the employer says, here's your choice. 
choice number one, choice number two, which health insurance do you want? And that's all they've done their whole life. They retire. All of a sudden, the government says, here's part A and part B. Go have it. And they don't know what they need, what their coverage needs to be. So we're going to do some seminars. We're going to do some Wednesday evenings and some Saturdays starting September 25th and run them through the end of October. Uh, we'll do Sunday, or excuse me, Wednesday evenings around 5.30 and Saturdays around 1 to try to accommodate those that are not working or still so working. So they would, what, go to our website or they, should <laughs> yep, they call go to the, the website. Uh, enrollment's going to start. We have some limited space that we can do, so I know these are probably going to be popular. And you know, See, the whole thing is, you know, um, it, it's like the, the government expects people to know these things. Like somehow in your dreams it gets into your brain and you know, it's very complicated and people don't understand how to get it and your health is so important. Yep. That's why it's such a large I issue uh, in the debates uh, because they want, they want everybody to feel confident about their health and so this is part of what EG Tax does. We will help you to understand uh, what's available before all the whatever happens with the with the election, which is a couple years off, and, and, and now you need it, and we want to help. And you can call us at our corporate headquarters at 632-7886. You can go to our website, at egtax.com. And um, let's see, we have a tax question, right? Yep, a texter wrote in. I think he's a little confused, but he said, what is a solo IRA? I know we've been mentioning solo 401ks. Well, uh, f uh, it's a, it's the same thing. It's the it's the solo it's the solo the solo four hundred one k. I'm assuming is what he's talking about, not the solo IRA, because it's just an IRA. Right. An IRA is an IRA. Mm -hmm. Qualified. Account. So, but if you uh, do a solo four hundred one k plan, that would be for somebody who's self employed, and you can put almost fifty thousand dollars away between the match of the company and the employee or self employed person's match. And again, if you want to. If you want to call us, we'll be very happy to say, okay, so your net profit's 75. If you want to, if you have no other employees, you want to set up a four, solo 401k plan, you can put, the company puts in X amount, you put in X amount, and you can set aside a lot of money, you know, almost $50,000 a year into a solo 401k. Into the IRA is just the regular max. 6000 Right. And depending upon your age, yep. you can do the, the catch up. Yep. Okay. The catch up. Yes. <laughs> right? um, the other okay. thing too about the, the, the events that we're having though, um, I want to stress to people that these are not sales events. We're not trying to sell it. These are just strictly educational events. We want them to be <laughs> understand how being in Medicare is going to work because obviously, you know, let's get that done, get it off the plate. They can enjoy retirement and do the fun things that they want to. And, you know, it's it's important to us and you know well and you know i mean and those of you that are listening that have come to our other seminars you know we're not selling anything mm -hmm. we accept we're giving knowledge to you because we we like it that people would say you know we went to your seminar and it changed our life and uh, it's a wonderful thing to serve people and have people say you know uh, EG Tax is a really great organization, and that's really what we want. We want word of mouth, and we want to help people. And we're going to take a short break. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on the cell phone. Text us at 3930. We'll see you on the other side. And another one bites the dust. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. I'm here in studio with uh, Chris Fabian, Tim Eliason. Uh, Tim is our health uh, insurance uh, president of EG Health Connect. And if you have any questions about your health insurance or you're wondering what to do, you're in that thing, you'd retired at 60, you got till 65, you got a five year problem. Tim and uh, his crew can help you. There's no charge for uh, Tim's expertise. And again, you can go to our website at egtax.com uh, or you can call us at 632-7886. And if you're interested in tax school, that's starting in October as well. Um, this year, of course, there is no penalty for not having health insurance. And my concern is that a lot of people are saying, well, I can't afford it, so I'm just not going to get it. And a lot of people don't understand that if they can't afford it, it usually means they don't have the income. And if it's due to income, that's where uh, they would get subsidies, right? Exactly. Can you know, and, and that's the thing. And, and a lot of people, and you mentioned earlier, and we didn't get really a chance to talk about it, is, you know, even somebody that has an employer-based plan, 
And some of these employer-based plans, they're charging them quite a bit. Uh, their premium that's coming out of their paychecks quite a bit. And they may be on a high deductible plan that doesn't cover it. You know, if, if for that individual it's greater than 9.5% of their income, they have the opportunity to, to go look at the marketplace. And, and I do a lot of that with people, too, that do have benefits through their employer. But it becomes unaffordable because it's eaten up such a large portion of their paycheck every week. And, right. and those are the people, too. It's, it's not just people that, you know, don't have right, an opportunity so, to get insurance at work. So you're making $40,000 and your contribution is more than $3,800 a year to your health insurance. You can get out of your employer's plan and look at the New York State of Health. Exactly. And, uh, and some of these plans, you cannot believe it. You almost think it's just like that example that you gave about the, the couple that you got them on the essential plan, and then when they turned 65, they didn't want to Yeah, change. exactly. You know? I mean, the, the, the whole thing is, assuming you don't qualify is that whole thing about uh, assuming is making an ass out of you and me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really should at least make the call then there's no charge right exactly and you know okay and, and let's I, go to joan but i got I, I don't mean to step on nope, you Tim, go ahead. but joan who was waiting before is back on the line hey joan how can we help you i have a utma for my granddaughter mm -hmm. U ugma uh, i thought it was a utma it's an educational thing oh okay sure okay she's presently in eighth grade 13 years old I would uh, guess that by the time she graduates, it should be from high school. That is, it should be up to one hundred and twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe I did the wrong thing, but I'm wondering if this is going to screw up financial aid that she might have received. Okay. Well, here's the thing: if you you're setting aside the uh, on your five twenty-nine plan all that money for your granddaughter, which is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. It is. There's no doubt about it that it, they're going to look at her, um, at her 529 plans because obviously she can she can help pay for her own education. Uh, that is the that's the conundrum that people get into. What you can do is you be the and the only benefit on the 529 is that it grows tax free on the federal and New York state. It's a deduction on New York state, and if you use it for uh, for qualified education expenses, then when you take the money out, it's not going to be taxable. But you're absolutely right. You have to look at at, uh, at the employee at what they would give you for her contribution, and that will definitely factor in. So the only other thing you can do is set up a non-529 plan for her uh, that maybe isn't in her name. That is money that would be earmarked for her education that nobody knows about. Well, Chris, you were going to say I, I was going to say. Um, now, new starting in 2019, you could take money out of the 529 and pay for her high school to help bring it down. It would be taxable on New York State, but on the federal, the growth would be tax-free. Just the growth, though. But if she, yeah, but it would help if she goes to a private school. It would help bring that down where you would help bring, you know, for the combat the, the financial aid. Okay. But but again, you never heard of it. It's not it's not a bad thing you're doing, but you, you definitely it's going to affect her financial aid. But you know, there, this is a complicated situation because you you know would would she get financial aid anyway? I think she would because her parents don't make a whole lot. Okay, well then maybe you want to think of an alternative method. I know that. Um, at the financial guys, they have a um, expert in college and college planning, and I think it would be well worth your time to go over there and talk to him. It's Jeff Boron, and uh, see what he would suggest. But if you keep it in the 520, 529, it will definitely be used as a consideration. Yep. But, there, but you could put it into an annuity, oh. and if you put it into an annuity, they won't consider it. So those. But then again, you have to look at it and say, is that what I want to do? So there's a lot of deep thinking you have to do before you make this this decision and and the other thing too is is what i'm seeing when i'm helping people that are going through the whole fafsa going to college and then the excelsior comes in that tuition mm -hmm. that they're doing through new york state yes. is that they're not gifting i shouldn't say gifting the word they're not granting would be the better choice of words granting people the excelsior until they look at all of their sources you know you have this thing from new york state that says you can go tuition free 
but they're not really granting that until they see what other resources the individual has. Oh. Just because you're below a certain income doesn't mean you're going to get the entire Excelsior. In other words, what he's saying is you're assuming she'd get the the uh, the help from on a scholarship just because her parents' income is low. But if the parents have other assets, that could muddy up the waters too. Exactly. So that's what you have to say as well. Uh, so if you have the wherewithal to set aside this money for your granddaughter, you might want to do a separate kind of an account uh, for for her. But again, I would suggest you go talk to Jeff Boron and see if he... I never heard of a non-529. I mean, what what are you saying? A regular... Well, I mean, like a savings account, yeah. like a checking account, like a... I mean, not a checking account, like an annuity. A anything that's not in her name. You're not going to get any tax benefit on your end. It's going to grow completely taxable. Okay. Uh, and it, and when you take it out, the because you've been paying taxes on it as you went along, you, it'll you can use it for her education. It's your money, but if you put it in her name, it's going to definitely you be used as a consideration when she's applying for scholarships. Okay, but it's in her name now. Okay, but doesn't mean you have to put any more money in her name, right? Oh, I yeah, I get it. Does, How old did, is she? How old is she? How old? Thirteen. Okay, so you got another seven years now. that you can load up the money and do something else for her. But again, this is a very there's a lot of things you have to ask yourself. Um, if you put this money for her for for her scholarship and she uh, and it's going to read for her education and she's not going to get any scholarship money, is that really a bad thing? Uh, can, will her parents really qualify if you do all this? Uh, is she, uh, did you really help her? So there's a lot of things that you should really look at before you you change the path you're on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks much. All right. Thanks, Joan. And and Jeff Boron, you know Jeff Bor Boron's uh, phone number? 633 Yeah. Uh, for those of you that are listening and you're, you, you got a, you're, you're wondering what to do to make sure you get the maximum bang for your buck, just like Joan is thinking, it is true. If you put money into the 529, they're going to look at it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So don't put money into the 529, but then you don't get the deduction on New York State. Then it doesn't grow tax-free. Be, but if you put it in an annuity, that grows tax. Right. It, tax if deferred. she had other grandchildren, she could also change the she beneficiary. She could roll it over to that, too. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930. 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. Our text is 3930. And, um, okay, so do you ever see anybody that, uh, Tim, that absolutely would have qualified for health insurance and they just haven't? They missed the boat for how many years? Yeah, you know, they they kind of listen to the whole, you know, thing that it's the Unaffordable Care Act, not the Affordable Care Act. You know, I can't afford it. You know, I went on the marketplace and I put, you know, looked at these plans and they're, you know, hundreds of dollars a month. And well, you know, a lot of times they don't understand the impact of their income. They may be eligible for those uh, advanced premium tax credits or what sometimes are called subsidies to lower their premium. So, you know, they just sometimes, you know, again, they don't understand the options that are out there. There's a lot of different options that they can do to pursue different things with with uh, lowering their premium and having health insurance that they'll use. You know, that's the big thing I feel like the I but always do. Isn't one of the worst things you can do is underestimate your income when you're on the uh, New York State of Health because you don't want a subsidy if you're not going to be able to qualify when you file your return. And we see that a lot where people and will go on there. explain how that would work in our little bit of time that's left. Yep. The one of the things that uh, happens with that is a lot of times we have people that they'll take, um, you know, um, and have their income they say okay this is what i get paid at my job or this is my self-employment income and they'll put that in there well then throughout the year sometimes they say you know what the furnace went out and the transmission went out in the car i'm going to take you know ten thousand out of my retirement account and to help cover the cost well they forget about that come tax time that is added to their income and all of a sudden that subsidy and credit that they got that was based just on their job is also now based on their income, which is their job plus that distribution from a retirement account. And all of a sudden, they're going to have to pay back all that money they got to help with their health insurance right. on their tax return. Right. When they do tax, their tax return, return, it's a big ouch. Hey, mm -hmm. let's quickly go to Don on line one. Hey, Don, how can we help you, sir? Oh, good. Get to the 529 plan. I had two for a couple of nephews, and they're done with college, and it's kind of growing. What do we do to get rid of those, sir? 
They're in their names. Well, they're Thank the ben Chris. yep, they're the beneficiary. So you have to age 30, they're age 30 before you have to take the money out. So if you want to leave it there, hope they get married, have grand if they have children, then you could turn it into their children's names or you can just take it out. They could take the money out and they would then have to pay tax on the growth on the federal and then pay tax on the federal and state on the whole thing Unless if they don't they use, use it. Unless they use it for college. Right. They, they might want to go back and get their master's degree, you know. Well, I don't think they're going to get their master's degree. Well, I'm ju that's just an option, right? Yep. So if you have any questions, though, you can call the office, Don, and we kind of ran out of time here. But thanks for calling. Everybody that called, thank you for, for calling. Uh, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady. To, on Don't forget, Monday is the extension deadline for uh, partnerships and S-corporations. You can, you can call uh, EG Tax at 632-7886. If uh, something that has uh, we talked about on the show today with Tim or Chris about uh, your health insurance, you're wondering, you don't have health insurance, your kids don't have health insurance, give Tim a call, there's no charge. Uh, we have EG Health Connect that our whole thing at this wing of our company is all about getting you health insurance. And many people that think they can't qualify or think they don't have the money to, uh, to get on the New York State of Health, there is plans or subsidies by New York State where they actually will let you get on with not little or no money per month. So anyway, Chris um, uh, and, and Tim, thank you for um, thank you, Esther. Uh, being our special guest today. Uh, they can get you at 632-7886, right? Yes, that's correct. And at our website at egtax.com. That's correct. And on Tuesday and Monday, we're going to be there uh, working the midnight oil with all these extensions. Correct. Yep. Right? <laughs> all right. Un until next week, I'm Esther Gullius with uh, Chris Fabian, our special guest, Tim Eliason. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.